Fusion 360's 2D Adaptive Clearing is the most powerful toolpath in its class. Not only is it using the latest roughing strategies to remove material faster, but it will also help increase your tool life and limit machine wear. Let's take a quick look. I will select 2D Adaptive Clearing from the ribbon bar, and we are presented with the properties to the right. There are five tabs, and this is a good time to point out that with CAM in Fusion 360, these five tabs are always in the same order and has the same functions no matter what type of toolpath you use. This is done so it will be much easier to learn and remember using Fusion. The first tab is always where you select your tool and input your feeds and speeds. Let me click on the tool button to access the tool selection area. There will be another video on the tool library, but let me just give you a quick tour. To the left we have our filter. Here we can change such things as operation type, tool type and so on to narrow down the tools in our selection area. To the right you have a detailed tool info. I want to point out that you can control all details of your tools using the tool library button right on the cam ribbon bar. 2D adaptive tool strategy is going to calculate the material between the specified stock and your Fusion 360 model. The benefit is a constant chip load on your tool that will let you use the entire flute length and many times let you double the feeds and speeds versus other tool path. Let me select the 16mm flat end mill and hit OK. The second tab is geometry. This is where we can select what we want to machine. I am going to select the bottom edge right on our fusion model. The great thing is, if there is a change later to our model, Fusion 360 will let us know and you can update the toolpath with a click of a button. You do not have to reprogram your part. I can also select on the cutter direction arrow in the graphics area to control on which side of the selected contour I want to remove material. The third tab is where you can adjust all your heights. The fourth tab is the passes tab. This has everything to do with the cutter engaged in the material. Here you can change the radial load on the cutter, if more depths are needed, and since this is a roughing cut, you will see that Fusion 360 already have stock to leave turned on, so we can have a little material left over for a finishing operation. The fifth and last tab is all about the cutter not engaged in the material. You have control over such things as stay down levels between the cutter being engaged with the material. It does not take much effort in Fusion 360 to create a high efficient toolpath using today's technologies. Let me click OK and if I click simulate and play, you will see that we created a roughing toolpath with a constant chip load with just a few clicks.